I'm going to make sure everybody is as aware as they can be as we witness the pluralistic descent into madness by the current fading regimes that have actually destroyed themselves over, over and over and over again, yet because they can't really die there have infested third density to the point of excess in which there has to be some sort of drastic measure that goes beyond anything that we could comprehend in terms of the overall removal of uh, the infestation that we've been inflicted of, at least in our case for at least the past 6,000 years, you know, but other than that, I think things are good, you know, you know what I mean, every day that we wake up, you know, we should definitely give thanks and praise to that, which is, you know, the truest element of what we perceive to be, or what some would refer to as God or supreme deity, which is in actuality looking more like an overarching higher self that encompasses everyone that aspired to be a part of it. More than which itself is an eternal intelligence that saw the end as it saw the beginning, you know what I'm saying? And then created a way to almost reverse engineer what we perceive to be as, you know, dimensional reality or whatever that can be. We just don't have a way of fully, I think, grasping the full magnitude of it until we're outside of the physical form and we can go back to be what we eternally are as opposed to what we think we've been, you know? So uh, anybody have any questions about anything before we start? So also to add on to that, so to me, like more science outside of the traditional understanding of what has come to be since the Prophet Noble Jali, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's definitely a warranted medium. However, it's way more expansive, I think, than we even are, start, are, are realizing in this time, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately. You know, or fortunately, it depends on how you look at it. So anything that, you know what I mean, you can or we can kind of like look into the real annals or the deeper levels of what it is really allows us to become more and more who we've always been, you know. Yeah, it's a book called Rebels, Imposters, and something else. It's a good book that gets into a lot of them um, using the more, using Moors using whites as decoys, decoys using whites as, you know what I'm saying? And vice versa. Matter of fact, there's a movie, there's a TV show coming out on Netflix. You should probably talk about this real quick. And it's all about the boule. You know what I'm saying? Which is really crazy. But yeah, it's about the boule. Yes, rebels, pretenders, and imposters. Thank you, Dan, Brother Dan. Islam. Um, yeah. Uh hold on.
Yeah, this is all about the bullet. So, hopefully I can make it. Uh, hold up one second. Okay. Yes, here we go. It is called. Okay, why is that not working? I'm trying to show you guys the image, but oh, here we go. Yes, it's called the American Society of Magical Negroes. Yes, so this movie is about uh basically gods like black people are all magic or there's a certain group of of so-called black people i.e negroes from america so it's an indigenous thing and they are magical and their job is to help white people in their lives to make sure that things go well so that way they don't kill other uh black people regular black people and by doing this for these these white people, they are helping black people survive. Because racism is the is the number one killer of black people. And white people are so powerful over them that they need to have use their magic instead of using their own magic to help their own people. They are gonna use it to help white people stay uh and do things so that way they they uh keep white people in a in a favorable light to keep them happy so that way they don't take their their crazy rage or animalistic rage out on black people yeah david allen greer one of the a consummate virtuoso actor can do comedy drama voices whatever and he's reduced to doing shit like this. Why? Because he's a part of the boule. Because this is about the boule. This is the boule. You understand? This is coming out after Color Purple. You understand? So these coons are uh, doing this. And this is going to be on Netflix. So one is putting white people. Um, yeah, yeah. Like a skeleton key. Exactly. It, instead of using them how we're supposed to use it, using the magic they're supposed to have to help their own people, what they're going to do is is help white people in their lives and use it to make sure they go. Now, this is coming from the trope of the black friend that's usually in the rom-com movies. That has been such a trope in American culture that, quote unquote, white women who are the majority of people help destroy this country uh, help and destroy this country pleasantly? It's the it's the wino, the wino moms, you know, disgruntled and shit that want to act like they're inclusive because, you know, they can't deal with their daughters being trans or gay or they're so into making that happen that they just are so zealots for, you know, causes that they know that ancestrally they've always been against, such as, you know, so-called. uh uh, black liberation and these types of things. You understand? In the end, they always revert back to their own culture, but they are trying to also punish themselves and their own culture, i.e. white males, for putting them in the position to have so much. So this psychosis is what really funds what they refer to as the Karen syndrome. You understand? That is perpetuated by these people under this type of mind control. So this thing is basically there to promote one white people being still the dominant force and apex predators of everybody on the planet. So we still got to go along with that lie. Then we got to go along with the lie that black people are there to always help white people and put them in better position to the point that some white people believe that's true. Three, they still referring to themselves as Negroes, right? <laughs> 
for they trying to also act like what they're doing is there to help so-called black people. And five, it's always a goddamn comedy. You understand? So naturally, if you can't tell, I think it's going to be bullshit. But, you know, whatever. Because all of these guys, you understand? All of these guys are a part of the problem. All of these guys have been down with the whole thing from the beginning because that's the only way they could be in. And then what happens is once they're in, they start to go, they get fame, they get success, but they also start to go mad, you understand? They start to go crazy because the more because the more shit they got to do and the more stuff they got to feel, you know, they don't have the ability to discern, you know what I mean, reality from from fiction anymore because they've literally given themselves up to uh uh entities that you know they that are both physical and non-physical these are the entities we always talking about devouring these people from the inside out however they can't really discern any of this because they're totally immersed in it for instance um y'all all of the diversity ESG DEI shit that I talked about over two, three years ago. Y'all been y'all were in class. I told y'all it was going to end with destruction. Well, it has. It, it has led to millions of people losing their jobs. It's led to all of these fake uh black lesbian female um uh triumvirates of woke and and communism basically putting them in the position that they really didn't earn that they really weren't qualified for or to appear more virtuous and stuff than they really are case in point just last week the chick that they have running harvard i think it's a black lesbian you know type woke type communist marxist right this is the chick that invented let me see if I get her picture. Hold up. This is the chick that invented the 619, 1619 fake history shit that the United States started with the with the uh slave colony of Jamestown, Virginia. Basically pulling 1774 to 1776 out of the timeline and then bringing it back to the time basically when the British was running the shit as a colony, as a corporation of the British East India Company, right? Thereby taking it outside of the United States and then basically allowing her, them, the Pan-Africanists, the Pan-Slave, Transatlantic Slavists, right? These guys to make them go along with the idea that they, you know, this is the whole country was founded on on um, slavery, right? Which, if you're a black, um, you know, uh, Pan Africanist, RGB, RBGist, these type of people, you are going to accept that. You're going to think that that's true. You know what I'm saying? You're going to go along with that because you have been indoctrinated. You know what I'm saying? To to do it. Now the same way, so. Think of her as Reva, uh, for those people that watched Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? There was a character they created called Reva that didn't exist in the real continuity, whatever. They just made this black character up as a one-off that they could throw and get a, a, a equity inclusion diversity check from Klaus Schwab in them. You understand? So they get money to put useless people that have no real talent in positions that allow them to say that, you know, it's that. So the more diversity thing you get, the more money you you can get, right? But it reduces the real money that you could get due to the fact that um, everybody starts to, the whole overall quality of, what it is you're doing starts to decline. You understand? You you decline because you don't have comp you're not getting people based on competency. You're getting people based on 
uh, their skin color. You understand? <laughs> so it's not beneficial for them to continue it, but they're going to keep it going because this is how they make their money. So they got homegirl. I'm trying to get her picture. Hold on. Okay, this is her. So again, it works better if you're gay, black, and female. So that's three diversity checks right there. You did? So, and it also helps if you're stupid, which most of these females, I'm not, again, I'm not talking about real females, like, like you know, real Moabites, queens and shit. I'm talking about these brain dead black people, these Katanji Brown, Oprah type, you see what I'm saying? These type chicks, right? These are the chicks that they love. Like there's a mayor right now named Tiffany Hayner. And she's running a village that had a surplus of millions of dollars, an all black village. I forget in what state. And she's running this shit into the ground right now. But she's a black girl magic and, you know, they got to make it happen. Same thing with Fannie Willis. You see, everybody know that, you know, she allegedly was, you know, one of the one of the bottle girls or whatever she was doing with the gangsters and all of the niggas in Atlanta. You know, she was rocking big nuts. So this is a personal vendetta with her, which is also why they used her to go against and now try to lock Trump. And now that whole shit is falling apart. And so eventually they're going to use and throw her under the bus. You understand? We know that this is coming. Just like um Letitia James. Same, same. See what I'm saying? It's all of these black female mayors that's gay or somehow on some city girl shit because... They have celebrated ignorance as a virtue to such a degree that they have no moral center because they know that they don't have to have character or talent or whatever they do to maintain the position they're in. They can only, you see what I'm saying, maintain what it is they're there. And they're there to destroy the actual institution that they've been let in to run them up so now that all of this is failing this chick has basically destroyed harvard was set up in what 1620 so in all the time that harvard has existed this is the first time that they've had a surplus of people bailing on harvard to the point that based upon her now them all also saying that she plagiarized the 1619 shit. She didn't even make it up. She just plagiarized it, put her name and said on it, and then acted like it was a true history. So as people started to debunk this whole thing with her, she then doubled down on it to the point that once the Israel thing popped off, she initially, being she's a Marxist communist, started um started bigging up Palestine and saying, hey, we got a free Palestine and all of this shit. You understand? But the problem with that is she's also, these these colleges are also like Harvard and Harvard, Yale, right? These are heavily politicized universities now, but they're politicized by Hamas. How? You ask. How would Hamas be involved with this? Well, Qatar, which is which is a, benef a benefactor of Hamas is a huge benefactor of <laughs> is a huge benefactor of Harvard. They give these niggas thousands of dollars every year. You understand? So when the Jews now is walking across the campus and they get and they see all of these Hamas flags and Palestinian <laughs> flags and shit, they feel like they're going to get attacked. Because they might, because these these people are insane. They're crazy. They're radicalized, guilt-ridden, stupid people. Right. They, that's what I'm saying. The whole 1619 shit was debunked. They debunked that shit totally. But she had, excuse me, she had to go to Congress the other day, right? And from going to Congress. She had to be put in a position where she had to stand before them and basically act like that whole shit was true. And it wasn't. Then when they started asking her her stance on the on the terrorist shit, the Hamas shit, 
they, she was like, now nah, she doubled down on it. You gotta support freedom and be against colonialization and all that shit. This bitch is in Harvard. <laughs> this is the president of Harvard. You understand? So she done put herself on the pike for this fake, woke, radicalized, stupid behavior to be anti-Jew when she was put there by Jews. You was put there by the Jews, put you there. Because they knew you was stupid. They knew you was a Katanji Brown. They knew you was somebody that they could radicalize based upon, you know, you being a, coming from a single mother home and you being the first one to go to college and all of the bullshit that they that they convince women that they need to be successful. And then once they get them in there, they done. But here go the crazy shit. The white once after civil rights shit happened and the affirmative action shit got set up. But this is the same liberal set it up for them. Right. All of them started to leave the HSBCUs. That's how they all started going into debt. <laughs> because all the black people who always felt that, I guess, were radicalized to believe that, that Harvard and Yale was better, they all started wanting to go to Harvard. So then it got to the point that by the end of the eight, 80s, mid 90s, you had a whole crop of white folk that was getting over it with shit. So you know what they said? They said, well, they could be reversed. And they started going to the HSBCUs. <laughs> the black people start going to the white university. The white people start going to the black university. Just how stupid these people are. Crazy they are. Instead of building up and maintaining the university integrities that they had, which basically destroyed the integrity of both. To the point now where this brain dead person is on there straight lying about a history that we know is not true. When, when you ever heard of them talking about Jamestown, Virginia and solely citing 1619 as the birth of that? There was no, there was, it just is just wrong. So in that, she's been exposed because like I said, she's the reaver. She was the red herring or whatever thrown in there, the cudgel that they could use to pump they, they, they you know, they stuff through. So the thing in the middle, that's the real, that's the worm. That's the worm that they sticking in these niggas' eyes and, and basically comes from the probius quill of whatever demon they harvest the shit from. This is what they putting in the eyes and wrapping around the retina and allegedly going up into the cerebellum, wrapping itself around and then eventually sucking the soul force out so it now becomes you. Much like the, the fish, there's a parasite fish that actually goes in fish's mouth and eats their tongue. And then what it does is it becomes the fish's tongue. So when the fish eats stuff, it gets food, but it only gets the food that the tongue allows it to get. So, yeah, so they destroyed the whole university by putting this fake Jedi, this fake <laughs> this fake actor in like what woman you know is named Moses that's first of all when you ever met a black woman named Moses that's how you know it's some fake you know whatever shit boule shit because these are the magical negroes that have been secretly helping this white man rule and destroyed humanity from time immemorial These are the magical Negroes that help kill people like Fred Hampton and Bunchy Carter. And you know what I'm saying? And the list goes on and on. This is the real. This is the worm. This is what they put allegedly in the gold juice that they get niggas to drink. And then you start making millions of dollars. This is the demon. This is this is what you. What the the enemy was reduced to. The ancient enemy is reduced to this shit. You understand? Allegedly. Because, you know, it's going to be people like, oh, that's that's a fake uh, worm. Somebody made that. Whatever. Whatever, man. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is what's going on. Yes, vril. Yes, vril. Uh, they also call it frill. P-H-R-I-L-L. They're also called... Uh, Iliots, they're also called Pindar, they're also called Probrius Quills. They got a different names. The Great Worm. 
This is it. It's a consciousness that's let loose in these idiots. And then it becomes these idiots. And that's why they're so easily hive minded control. Disney used the girl on the left. Disney used her as a cudgel. They put out this whole press release. And at the end of the press release, they said, if anybody has a problem with Moses Ingram's color in this, in, in playing this role or whatever, then we say we resist. It's like, who, nobody had a problem with that. Nobody had a problem with this chick color. Who had a problem with people color in Star Wars? Niggas in Star Wars is orange. How are they, how you got problems with niggas race in Star Wars? Because it's, it's an imaginary thing. So anybody can be in it. But when you force people in it with an agenda, you understand what I'm saying? You make people hate her or it. So they used her basically to hide the fact that the series they were putting out was garbage. But they know they could put a black face on something and everybody just go along with it for fear of being canceled or called racist or whatever else they do. They don't mind control people to accept. This is the problem with moving away from merit. I don't give a damn what color the, the, the person making a movie is. Is the movie good? I don't give a damn what color the what you call it uh, uh, mechanic is. Can he fix the damn car? Maybe I've graduated from certain aspects of racial identity that these niggas is obsessed with. But to me, it's all cat. Because the same people pumping and believing this, like I said, this woman is a black lesbian. She has done, she has successfully destroyed an ancient so called white, because it wasn't even Harvard and Yale wasn't white in the beginning and all that, but whatever. You know, let's go by what it was. She successfully destroyed an entire institution, American institution, in three years. Out of an institution that's been existed for over 500 years. So on some levels, on a black revolutionary level, that's dope. Right? But on an education level, because of this bitch, you have lawyers now in other different firms and this like that saying that they will not hire anyone from Harvard anymore. So imagine you done worked your whole life, your whole life. To finally get a Harvard degree. And now because of this bitch, you, you can't get a job nowhere. That would turn people racist. You understand what I'm saying? Take it outside of you just being melanated or being oppressed for a second. Okay, let's let's deal with this as people. Fuck the bullshit, man. Let's get to the root of it all. They're trying to kill everybody at this point they don't care what color you are they want everybody dead so once you accept that you understand you can get past i can get past the debate like i'd rather the racist i'd rather the open racist you understand when shit was like that shit was simpler Think about it. When it was open racism, we was together. <laughs> that shit kept the family strong. <laughs> you understand what I'm telling you? Say I'm wrong. No, I'm not. When racism was strong, we were stronger. <laughs> we, had, we had more conviction. We were together. We knew how to maintain the family. What are you talking about? Yes, we was oppressed. Yes, we was downtrodden, but we was together and we had property and we had land. <laughs> we had equity, nigga. What are you talking about? That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about reality. I'm talking about what is, not what you, not what these fake Democrats, like we started the Republican Party. Niggas, it was us. <laughs> not them. It was never them. But let this chick tell it. We was all on. We was all in Africa, swinging from the jungle. Even though there's no jungles in Africa, we were swinging from the vines and shit. And 
It, the white man sold us, the, the, the homie women king sold us over here. <laughs> and, and then that was it. Then we was on the plantation. Then it was Aunt Jemima. And then, and then we was, and then we was civil war. And then we was free. <laughs> like that's, that's, that's the history that this, that, that this chick was, is pumping. People like her is pumping to y'all. All I'm saying is like, look, look at the reality of what it is, man. And stop getting so caught up in what niggas think about you. That's why we in this in the first place. Kanye said it. They gave us their wealth and made us hate ourselves. That's it. That's the key. Stop wanting the shit they got. <laughs> Start with that. I just watched the documentary where they showed that they they pulling hair out of the drains of the sewers, y'all. They pulling the weave hair out of the drains in the sewers. This is where they're getting it from. They're getting the weaves from dead bodies. I saw the video. They're digging the bodies up and shaving the heads on the, on the dead corpses. They're making the hair out of Toxic plastic with with forks, the same plastic we, we used to eat the plastic spoons and schools with. This is what they're doing. This is where they're getting it from. And you wonder why women are insane. They turn women insane. This is why. This is why. Look it up. You can the first thing that'll come up, you're gonna see it. Just type in hair, hair weeds from the sewer. You're going to go down a rabbit hole you never thought. Not only are they praying to dead demons and dead entities, God, foreign gods over the hair before they send it. They cursing the hair. They cursing it. Before they put it, every time they put a piece of it in the bag. Yes. This is what they doing. You think niggas care? No. You think this going to stop them from doing it? No. So this is why the, the the devil and these people is looking like, no, we can do what we want to these people. <laughs> they don't care. What is it going to take for them to, fi to finally stop us? This is how the white man looking at it. And when I say the white man, I'm talking about the ultimate white man, the devil. The individuals and the group. They getting the hair off of dead bodies. They shaving it from little girls who are crying, who have grown their hair their whole life and have been dreading this day, crying. You know the end, the, the horror that they feeling, knowing that somebody just, they, they could turn on TV and they could just see 50 million people wearing their hair, would never know. You know what that does to them psychologically? This is what they doing, yo. And you paying for it. They cursing you while they putting it in the hair. Why they doing it? Nah, but they're going to keep doing it. So what you got to understand is you cannot force everybody to see you for who you are. You got to know who you are and where from whence we come. Because if we don't, we're going to be put in a position in which the original images of us, things like this, because this is where we really come from. On your left, this is this is the image of Christ that's on the Pope's cross that he prayed to. Just like the Madonna, they always show you the black Madonna, but they never show you the Yehoshua that they crying to, that he praying to. And that's him. The copper colored people. Good. Copper colored people. Jet black. This is this is who we are. This is the ancestral people they are. This is who they've tried to breed us away from being. Any Christian that calls themselves a Christian is not a Christian. Because if they was a Christian, they'd be Nazarenes. You understand? <laughs> you understand? Because Christ was a Nazarene. Because because Yeshua was a Nazarene. He they allegedly said that he was crucified on Golgotha. Right. So in 2000 something, some white man went over there to the place on Calgary where they said it was 
and they 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 did a dig under the the spot on the place where they said that this person had died and in that they found a relic of the ark of the covenant and under that they found a skull golgotha means the place of the skull so the skull allegedly was from adam and then the the ark of the covenant was on top of that and on top of that was blood and when allegedly they tested the blood, they said that the shit was, was still active. Just when the last time you heard that story, that's the same story they told you about Henrietta Lacks, right? Didn't they say the same shit with Henrietta Lacks? And the family just got the money off of that. And they about to sue the other company that did it. They, they getting, they getting boo-boo money off of this now. But yeah. Because we of the blood, all our blood is like that. That's what they not telling us, y'all. All our shit is like that. Why you think our, our organs, our melanin is so much money? Because we are the only humans. Because we're the ones that are born human. Excuse me. We are of man. They are of mankind. We are the original people. For real, for real. So we have the original blood. So anything that we are part of, what, what is considered the most high is a part of and invested in. You understand what I'm saying to you? So that means then that where they allegedly crucified Yeshua was on the same spot above the same spot where they put the ark and the ark was in the same spot where Adam's skull allegedly rested. That is if we're looking at these, these stories as historically accurate and true. Which at this point, you you don't know either way. You got to go with the what is the evidence, right? And even that is tainted. Why? Because you got a bunch of magical Negroes around here putting spells on niggas, right? Al allowing the same people that they say they are pressed by to dance next to them on, on the step line. How y'all do that? How are you oppressed by these people and at the same time you letting them into your sororities? How are you doing that? Y'all don't see no hypocrisy in this? <laughs> Y'all don't see nothing wrong with this. But then if I say, nah, that shit is bullshit, then I'm, a, I'm against black people, right? <laughs> these niggas crazy. They crazy. They crazy. Why? Because they sow dead people head into them. You understand? On purpose. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, niggas is doing this on purpose. Like, you could tell somebody, look, you could tell this is a look, sis. I'm showing you. They pulling it out the sewer, the shit that's in your head right now. She's going to look at it. Word. That's horrible. Well, mine ain't like that. That's the, it, it. So... So you understand why they feel they could do the shit they do to us? Because if you don't care about your own crown, the crown that Allah gave you, that which no other being on the world on earth has, African people here don't grow as long and, and thick and shit as black people here. Unless like they in Ethiopia, maybe on the Easter side, maybe. Black people won't even let. I watched the thing today where they put with a with a black woman was putting a lace weave on an infant, a baby, man. I watched I, I watched this black I watched this teacher cry. This teacher was crying about the state of the children behind this shit. And then they asked Sexy Red, <laughs> Sexy Red is like, "This just 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 put on Pound Town and, and whatever." Like they don't care. They don't care. So you have to understand that if you do care, if you do see a problem with it, that you have now become a part of a certain sect of society that has now be that has now become what what the Bible talk about as the Gregory or the watchers. We're the ones that are watching the decline of humanity. You understand? We are watching the, the destruction of young men, watching the, the, the uh, watching as they are being reduced to 
to not only just let's say paychecks or money but they're being reduced in manhood to the point that they only feel they can be that if they conform it somehow where that has become the norm you understand with, with cer certain little boys are raised to the point where they don't even stand up to pee like you understand what i'm saying like you gotta really understand hear what i'm saying it's 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 we we are witnessing this so as the witnesses we obviously this is happening to us so that way we can we can actively we can actively diagnose when everything went awry. You understand? The reason why, because you're not infected by it. You see what I'm saying? Like you, you haven't succumbed to it yet. So this means you're probably not, which then means you represent the surviving class. You understand? The surviving class of people who have outgrown this reality so so we can't be the cannon fodder like everybody else you understand we we can't be because we survived everything up until now so as we watch the destruction and the decline right of little boys watching their mothers right being being ridiculed by because their mothers have only fans or their fathers are now uh, their mothers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You dare, they, they are all down with it. So what you gotta accept is that they're gone. They are dead. They are dead, which means we are in the land of the dead because we don't obey NASA, see? We don't obey this. This is from the movie, the predictive programming movie, Leave the World Behind, right? Now watch this. Watch this. Okay. Yes, let me. Now, this is based on a little book that's basically about the, the destruction of, you know, man or humanity based upon. Uh, planned planned events by the government. Hold up, y'all. Let me see if I can pull this up. Okay, get it right now. Anybody have any questions while I pull this up up? Sorry. Yeah, you got to accept the fact that they're all gone. So I'm, I'm going to get to us and why this is almost good for us. Because we... Okay, one second, let me get these out for you now. This picture's horrible, I need to move it. Yeah, so when you watch the movie, there's a bunch of crap in it that they've done or whatever, but this is one of the main stories. And they're so blatant with it now because the writers that they have are hacks. See, back in the days, like Stanley Kubrick and these niggas, these niggas would do stuff where you have to really sit down and dissect it. But see, what happened was the conscious community existed. And what we started doing was we started busting these movies down. 
So much so that me personally, I stopped doing it all the time because I didn't want to come off like the rest of the hacks that didn't know when enough was enough. Because I didn't want to be one of these malls or one of these so-called people who do these lectures out here just waiting for the white man to put out another movie. I thought that was whack too, you know, but that's me. Um, so in the process of that, we did it to such a high level that the white boys started catching on and they started doing it to the point then the Christians and now everybody's doing it, right? Because we, again, are the shit. We always are the ones that do the shit that everybody jump on later. That's just how it always will be for us because, again, we're the original. So think about that. As the original people, anything original, we would have to be the ones creating it. That's how you know everything started with us. Islam is very simple. There was a time when there was nobody here but people that looked like us. That's not racism. That's, that's actually Darwinism. <laughs> You could flip it and use they shit. No, that's actually Darwinism. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So these types of movies have been coming out since before I was born. Remember Soylent Green? Actually, they got a Soylent Green drink out now. <laughs> people don't even know what that is. Soylent Green is people for people that don't know. That was the Charlton Heston movie. That's where they took Moses after they put him in Planet of the Apes and then put him in a, in a future of overpopulation to the point where they didn't have enough food to feed everybody. So they created a new food called Soylent Green and they come to find out that Soylent Green was people. So what's the difference between them doing that and them talking, telling you that they've created a new form of clone meat or human meat? Human meat is people. Therefore, if you eat that, you're a cannibal, period. But they've now even tried to make cannibalism cool. They've tried to make that cool. They made a whole TV show with Drew Barrymore and Josh Dashamel in which she was a cannibal, eating people, putting people in blenders and all types of shit. And this is all good. People are okay with it. Why? Because these movies, again, are predictive programmings to let you know. One of the symbols of Baal is the elk. Right. That's why that's why you've seen the whole thing of the Elks in the woods in the movie. When you stack their name together, Roberts, Mashahala, Ethan Hawke and Mahala, it all creates Baal. See, Baal is the one to destroy. Uh, his job or its job is to destroy people's faith in their institutions, in themselves, in a higher power, in their higher self, et cetera, et cetera. See, that's why there's four of them, because each one of them represent the horsemen. You see, because all of these niggas are puppets. They're not even real people, these things. For all you know, Julia Roberts is a goddamn robot. You don't know. You know how many different versions of these niggas they done put in front of us? <laughs> you know how many different, look at all of the different versions of Beyonce you done seen in your life. You ain't never seen the same Beyonce twice. Because none of this shit is real. Whitney Houston, allegedly her real mother is her real mother ain't sissy. Her real her mother's a lady named something Graves. Tracy Graves or something like that. Look it up. All of these people are something else. Yeah. That's why they got them in the middle of the road. The road is another dystopian movie about cannibal cannibals in the future. Right? They've been pumping this to us from the beginning. Who is Baal in the Bible? Baal is the name given to several deities who are designated as false gods or idols. Why? He, however, is most often used to describe when the Canaanite Phoenician god of fertility and rain. Additionally, Baal is associated with Beelzebub, demons, and the devil. Why all of a sudden all of this fascination with old Canaanite shit? Right around this time now, ain't wasn't um what's his name Hannibal the Canaanite, Phoenician yes, Carthage yes, but white people is bugging they like oh he's white blah 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 no, Phoenician and all of that is an Afro Asiatic language according to the white people. <laughs> so why is the government of Tunisia mad? Because it's all coming out because that would then mean because you got to look at it from the reality. 
if Netflix is putting on the fact and shit that Cleopatra, for instance, is it was melanated the way that we know she was, because most of the Greeks and all of them back then was melanated. They didn't look like the cosmopolitan Greeks of today. But regardless, right, they want to believe that because they've been there for the past 80 years or past 100 years or past 200 years, that that's somehow older than us as the people who laid the foundation of the places they was at. But whatever. Because these same white people will say, oh, well, Cleopatra wasn't black. So you mean to tell me that this queen who happened to be of Macedonian, Ptolemaic lineage, right, from Macedon and all of that, which means that they were Peloponnesian, which means they would have to descend from the ancient Peloponnesian races, like the Etruscans and them, who was black, who was melanated. Then if we want to take it to old Europe, we'd have to go into the Grimaldi people, who were the original people there. Who produced the Cheddar Man, right? The Warwick Man and all of these other fake names they come up with people. But let's go for the benefit of the doubt. So again, white man, you want to tell me, or Arab, you want to tell pale Arab, you want to tell me that, okay, Cleopatra couldn't have been black in Africa. But if I tell you that King James was black in Europe, you'd be like, no. So where was the original people at? They was only in Africa, right? But you, But according to you, they wasn't even there. So where was they at? They wasn't in America. They wasn't in Africa. They wasn't in Europe. So where was they at? Where was you at? Where where was we at? Where was we at in any of this? We just wasn't Phoenicians. We wasn't Canaanite. We wasn't none of these ancient people, but we are the original people. So if there was a people who were a Canaanite or a Phoenician or a Carthaginian in their ancient context, BC, that would mean that would be us or people who resemble us. Because we're the only people who look like those people who came from that time today. I am. This makes me feel good. So in that, that creates a circumstance by which they prove their own inferiority complexes by trying to be superior. Exactly. They just want us to be seen as slaves. But how could we be seen as slaves if the term Slovak or Slovenian means somebody that's pale or look like them? See, they're always boxed in. They're always boxed in. So what they got to do is, is punch what they say, punch up. <laughs> they didn't create anything. Nothing that they have came from them. Think about it. You think if this white man could go to the moon and leave these niggas behind, he wouldn't have already gone? (laughs) He can't escape the Van Allen belt. He can't escape this place. He knows that. He's told people that. He's told people that himself. And still, they they think it's real. They think it's real. So they create these types of movies, right, to make us think that the world is going to end. How can the world end? So they stop using the term end or apocalypse. You notice that the closer we get to it, the less they talk about this shit, right? The less they use the word, right? The closer we get to it. They don't want to use the word apocalypse or the end of the world or any of this, right? So they start using words like leave, phrases like leave the world behind, <laughs> What world? Which one? Right? When it's all to service their ancient, the ancient gods that we as the ancient Canaanites, the ancient Phoenicians, their descendants fought against. That's why we were elate. We are able to still be here, you know, because our ancestors, your ancestors, we, our ancestors fought against those niggas. We told them they was tripping. You cannot keep sacrificing babies to these idols, nigga. We're the ones that that stop them. Do you understand? We stop that. We're the ones. We said no. We're getting rid of all of you niggas. Matter of fact, we're going to wipe you off the face of the map where people don't even remember you. This, you don't know how many civilizations we ourselves just destroyed? Because of this shit? No. 
that's that's how that's how protected in the spirit we are. It's like when a woman gives birth, that shit hurt, 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 and she can remember it, but she but unless she go through it again, she's not gonna remember it like that, like that, like that, because it would drive her insane. Think about having to experience the pain as you felt it in the moment that you had it every time you think about it. You die. You die. Look, we, they didn't even invent the menorah. The menorah is not even Jewish. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even Jewish. It's not even Kwanzik because there is no such thing as Kwanzaa. That was created by a CIA agent named Karanga. You understand? Who had a fake Black Panther movement called Gentlemen's Incorporated that was beating Black women and selling them into, into slavery. Facts. See? So the Hebrews got it from the people who they came out of, who are the so-called Egyptians. But the Hebrews were just Phoenicians who took the Phoenician uh, uh, Canaanite culture and added Egyptian artifacts and shit to it and acted like there was something to do. That's the difference. That's who Abram really was. That's why he had to change his name to Abraham. He Basically, he had to switch up his name because shit got too hot where he was at. So he had to go. So his God that he was an agent for told him to go to this other place and hook up with these other Moors who had they shit together, learn how they did it, and then go back and then take his version and flip it and bounce it. Basically, he was, you know what I'm saying? He basically elevated or took what was there and put his spin on it, and it turned into a nation of people. But these people were not unified. That's why they kept degenerating themselves into paganism. That's why we separated from these from them niggas. That's why they asked us as Moors, right? To, to establish the Pahath Moab, the people who would choose the, the kings and the queens of Judah. Right? So there's this book going around that's been out that seems to have a lot of people upset. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why, but whatever i read i went through it and read it and it basically means more means dead and it basically gets into the hieroglyphic aspect of moors and the idea of more being a funerary right word or word associated with the dead which i have no problem with i actually think that gives us more power that gives us more power. That means that we were the lords of the underworld. That And you think that's somehow a, a negative to me, nigga? What? <laughs> like, like what, what, do these, what do these niggas be reading? Think about it. The Moors were the ones who, like I said, after Yeshua did what he did, right? Let's say if that happened, that ushered in the, the golden ages of humanity in which we reign supreme. Look at all of the buildings and all of the shit that we created during that period. All up until, so from the, from, so from the day they put Yehoshua up on the, on the stake or, or hung him from the tree, whichever one you want to say, to 1492. You know how long that was? And this is before the Gregorian calendar. This is before the what you call it calendar. The Julian joint. So you really don't know how long that was. So I'm reading this book because these Moors were saying, yo, this 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 dude on, on Facebook saying how the Moors are dead and, and just calling yourself a Moor means that you dead and this, this and that. So I said, let me read this. So I'm reading this shit. And I'm like, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 2,160 years. Who had a better reign than us, nigga? Are you crazy? And then what happened? All of our structures became necropolises, meaning places of the dead. Where the Negroes dwell. What a Negro mean? Dead, right? Right? So in essence, we had to get brought down to the Negro level. 
to come back up to the Morum level, to the Muslim level, to, to the, the true Mero level. I suggest every more read this book and understand your power, the power that we have over all of these other people who claiming that they this and they that and what we are and what we not. So what? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. More me dead. What does that mean? So what, me describing that means that I'm dead the way that you think is dead? How can that be when I got more knowledge than you? To see through the obvious bullshit of what dead really means in this text. What is the what does the book of the dead in Egypt say? Said we go forth by darkness into the night, into the day. Right? Look, more. Who make being dead look more fashionable than the original man and woman in America? <laughs> we done created a whole industry on being dead. Nigga, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You niggas have no depth perception of who and what you really are. So you should just shut up and, and spare us your banality. So that way we don't really see how stupid you really are. Because for you, for anybody, that means that we are the lords of all realms. You understand that? You understand in order for them to control anybody on earth, they got to get somebody that looked like us to do something that we invented before them. So that way they can actually take uh, ownership of it and enforce us to do it in a manner that then serves them. Who else they do that to in the world? Who else got that type of creativity? <laughs> Nigga, we was all born dead. We all walking around zombie was all walking around here zombies at one point or the other nobody is exempt from that on third density are you crazy that's what this symbol right here represent king king uh saint george playing the dragon but look how the ethiopians did it because <laughs> they really indians because they really from india you understand Everybody eventually is going to go have to go back to who and what they was. And more has got to stop taking what everybody think about them personally and stop reading and interpreting things based upon what other people want them to emotionally be uh, uh, affected by. That shit ain't got nothing to do with us. No. Yeah. We, we Yeah. OK, great. More mean dead. I'm with that. That means we're the lords of the dead, which explains a lot. <laughs> don't it don't it explain a lot no when your enemy is making mistakes support him <laughs> you know what I'm saying when your enemy be saying dumb shit like that like embrace it be like word you right you right more do me dead that means we have the that's why they used to come to us for the tower readings and the astronomy and the astrology and, and how to read palms. And who, who was doing all of that? Who had the science on all of that? Who was the people running the funerary temples? Who was doing that? The high priest of Anu, right? What's another, what's another word for the high priest of Anu? Anybody know? Anybody know? More, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. So keep hating. F find something else. Find something else to make me not like what I done already showed and proved is as it always was. Look, Muslim. Everybody think Muslim and Muslim the same thing. How is Muslim and Muslim the same thing when the term is actually Muslim? <laughs> yeah, I knew. I knew was the father. Then it was Inky, who was the son, and then you had um, Enlil, who was the other son. These was the hero twins in the Popo Vile story that was over here. This is um, Hercules, this is Thor and Loki. You understand? This is Heru and Set. This is Jesus 
and punches Pilot. <laughs> See what I'm saying? You can just keep going. This is Batman and the Joker. This is Spider-Man and Green Goblin. Like, you could just keep going. You could just keep going. But again, how could Muslim and Muslim be the same thing when the term Muslim is older than the term Muslim? They don't got no date on when the Algonquin people was using that term. This is before the birth of Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is before that. Look, Dr. Barry Fell, look, Harvard University, see? Harvard, Harvard University, see? Introduced. Thank you, more. Old come before you. Thank you, more. Here you go. That's basic alphabets. And who created the alphabet? The Phoenicians, right? And the Phoenicians was Canaanites, right? And the Canaanites was was uh, Moabites, right? And the Moabites was Moors, right? Right, 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 <laughs> right. Okay, so Barry Fell introduced in his book, Saga America, great book to get. Saga America, another book was great by him to get is The Iceman Inheritance. I would definitely want to read that. Um, no, Chosen People of the Caucasus. Get that shit. Great, great, great book. Uh, Saga America, 1980. Solid scientific evidence supporting the arrival centuries before Columbus of the Muslims, right, from Northwest Africa. Now, remember, think of the map. Think of it upside down and think of everything being closer together due to the fact that this is during the upheavals and shit that was going on, right? West Africa. Dr. Fell discovered the existence of Muslim schools at the Valley of Fire, Allen Springs, Logo Maraniso, Keyhole Canyon, the Washoe, you know the Washoe is the Washita, the Hickerson Summit Pass, Nevada, Mese Verde, Colorado, the Membres Valley, New Mexico, the Tipper Canoe, uh, Indiana, dating back to 700 and 800 CE, engraved on the rocks in Old Western, he found text and diagram of charts representing the last surviving fragments of what was been known as the systems of schools at both an elementary and higher level. The language of instruction was in Arabic written in Old Kufic. Arabic script. They also call that old Libyan script because they don't want to call it what it is, which again is Moorish. Uh, it will also be uh, anchored to Urdu. Urdu was the high language. That was the high spoken and written language of the ancients, right? Going all the way from ancient Indus, which is the real name of that place. Then the British called it Hindu. They couldn't, they didn't, they put an H in front of the I and made it Hindus. And then after a while, after the East Indian Company raped it, they started calling it Hindus because the Hindis did whatever they wanted. Boom. He found text diagram. The descendants of the Muslim visitors of North America are members of the present Iroquois, Algonquin, Anasazi, Hohokam, and Almec native people. The term Muslim was an ancient Delaware word unclear of the derivation. So again... You see what I'm saying? But you could call these people Indus. They called them, they weren't Indians because the term Indian come from Indus. Then the Spanish took the term Indus, referred it to Indios, and then put Los Dios Indios, which means those Indians outside of their God. And then started labeling all of the, the lands and the people there who lived in those lands as Indians. See, that became the term after 1621. <laughs> That's why you niggas is calling yourself Indians and shit now, which is not really even a problem. If y'all want to do that, cool. But don't try to act like. That's what was popping or that's what where the power and the treaties and all that was coming. When, when the Moorish Empire was the greater, what they call, barbaria, that was the barrier between them and the so-called Moors of the West. Because barbaria or barbarian means those beyond the barrier or the Berber. See? 
That's why we are the ones with this knowledge. All of the rest of them in the other parts that got cut off with the empire, they may have like some of the customs and like all of the, you know, pomp and circumstance shit they was doing, but they don't have the knowledge enough to applicably apply it to which they have their own standing any more than we do. Why? Because they need us. Because they're not the original title holders. Sorry, guys. <laughs> like I said, they've been creating these movies from the beginning. I remember when I was a child, one of the first movies I saw with my father, when my mother let me see him. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? One of the first joints. So we would always go to movie. I remember seeing Dune with him, Flash Gordon with him. But one of the one of the real movies I remember with him was when he took me to see Red Dawn. And my father, he was a cook in the army, so he was he in Vietnam. So there was parts of the time when he seen, you know, he was in the shit, as they say. Real quick, as we go through, if anybody hasn't sent the the joint. Uh, to uh, money sign capital ds418.com please do so there's a lot of people in class but the number of people in class and the number of people have sent hasn't been uh, it's not the same so again if you can make that happen I really appreciate it long story short we in the um movie theater and we watching it right I'm I'm gleaning on what's happening because this also came out at the time right around the time that Wolverine came out the character from the X-Men, Wolverine. So in the, so he was like the coolest character that was out for those of us that was into that, right? So in the movie, when the football team who was named the Wolverines were the actual um, heroes of the story, you understand? It also had a, that was like a compounded programming effect on me. And I would say me and those of us in Gen X that went and was growing up around that time. You know what I'm saying? So I remember after leaving the movie, me and my dad was walking and we was quiet. Because I guess I was doing the knowledge to it and he was really doing the knowledge to it. And as we was walking, he stopped. I never forget, he stopped me right in the street, looked down at me, right? And I'm looking up at him. And then he he came down to my level and looked me right in the eye and said, as long as you live, son, never, never be a communist. <laughs> then they got up and didn't say nothing else about it. We went, got pizza, and it was all good. You understand? So... And my dad, and you got to understand, my dad was like in the music industry and all that. So he's not political. He was not political like that at all. You know what I'm saying? He had no political affiliation at all. But the one thing that nigga told me was, son, <laughs> you don't ever be no communist, period. And I was like, you right, dad. Because I had, because again, that must have stirred some shit up in him. So from that point on, you understand, I knew communism it's evil. It, I didn't know necessarily why, and I found out later. Now, this is not to say that other Western systems aren't just as evil. Let's say capitalism, if you want, right? But at least with capitalism in its present understanding, you have the ability to rise above and own something as much as anybody can own anything in this world. Islam? So I'm not going to get into the semantic aspects that most so-called Black people use to stay on the fringes of society and not become productive in whatever system that they choose to endeavor themselves in. Because that is not the white man doing that to y'all. That's black people that have been radicalized by people like, like uh, old niggas like uh, Frank Marshall Davis, who was the real father of niggas like Barry Satoro, AKA Barack Obama, and the rest of these communists that's been out here put, put, pumping this bullshit. Because communism is, another word for communism is tyranny, right? And the only defense against tyranny is a well-armed populist. You understand? Think about it. 
for your whole life as a melanated person, you, you are the only people on the planet who have been taught to hate the place that you was born from. Name somebody else who was forced to do that. I'll wait. Name another group of people. Now, again, I'm not excusing what we perceive or understand as racism. It's not, I'm not even really building on that. I'm saying in general. You mean to tell me every day of your life as a melanated person, every day, you didn't experience some sort of racism? Some form? Every day? There's not one day that go by that you've been living in this country where you ain't think about a white man, you ain't think about a black man, you ain't think about being oppressed. <laughs> Has there been? I'm asking the class. I'm asking y'all. You mean to tell me every day of your life you had some white man <laughs> coming to you, treating you with racism? That's what you, that's what y'all are telling me I experienced? Anybody that say yes is a damn lie. And again, this is not excusing the racist instances that you've experienced, but I guess, but, but how about this? I bet you most of the real racist experience you experienced came from people that look like you. <laughs> Tell me I'm lying. The first time I heard a woman being called a bitch, that was my grandmother referring to another member of my family who's a female. <laughs> so what I'm trying to illustrate by that is basically saying that everything that we think is that, that we think is racism is really mental illness. Or worse, this. Working through these niggas. This Twilight Zone episode was called The Monsters. The Monsters are due on Maple Street. And that's funny because my dad lived on Maple Street, bless the day. And this show was basically the precursor to what, this was based on what happened with Orson Welles. Orson Welles did a radio show in which he talked about the invasion of the of the uh, United States by Mars, and people believed it was true. So from them, they knew that they could do that. So Ross Serling, who was actually a good dude, decided that his way to let everybody know the psychological programming that the CIA and these niggas was going to do to niggas was that he was going to put all of the shit in the Twilight Zone, in the TV shows. You understand? So this show specifically was basically what started happening was, if you go back and watch the episode, the lights started flickering in this neighborhood. And then people started talking about the lights and then, the, and then certain shit would happen. And basically he got the entire neighborhood, the aliens who were white men in silver suits, basically CIA, was basically using them as an experiment to see if they could cause disruption amongst the people just by flickering a couple of lights. That's what count that's what Kanye was talking about with the flashing lights. Because they use the flashing lights when it when they be programming you with the MK Ultra shit. So these are just some of the movies that illustrate this same predictive programming behavior. Because what they're trying to do is illustrate to us that the world can end. But that goes against what we know to be true based upon what we have experienced based upon our eternal existence. The world cannot end if we still in it. Islam. What does it say in the circle set? What does it say? It says time never was. Time never was when man was not. If life of man at any time began, 
a time would come when it would end. The thoughts of our law cannot be circumscribed. No finite mind can comprehend the things infinite. All finite things are subject unto change. All finite things will cease to be because there was a time when they were not. We are not finite. We are infinite. Why? Because we have neural melanin that is eternal. It's, it's not forever. It is eternal. It replenishes itself every time you wake up. This was the other two movies they put out when I was growing up that was basically trying to predict and mind control us to remember that the world could end and it would end with the communist invasion of the United States. This was an event. The day after was bigger than America. People don't really Amer remember America. <clears throat> but the day after was huge. After the day after, it was so good that allegedly the superpowers got together. And this is what initiated what eventually became known as Glasnost, which was the systematic denuclearization of the old uh, USSR and its change into the Russian Federation, which is like communist light. You know what I'm saying? But you can go back and look at these movies and you see what I'm talking about. They've been trying to get you and I to, to fall into this and then get people that look like us to remember it. So that way we don't realize that we are already... That's why they say that Latin is the language of the dead. See? Because we are the dead who spoke it. Now that we speak English, it's dead to everybody else. But what they're talking about it being dead, they're talking about the power that we could invoke in the language by speaking it and learning it and using it as the universal language of commerce amongst our dominions. Kufic Arabic and Urdu and these things were, were also languages that we use that stayed amongst the originals, us. Once shit got slowed down, you see what I'm saying? It became dead. And so English was used to replace it because they could put all of the different spell ings or angs, which means demon, inside the language itself. Yet you and I resurrect the dead language every time we speak it. And we even turn the dead language into music. We did that. The dead Moors did that. Because we are the lords, we are the kings of the dead. We rule the necropolis, nigga. They stay trying to shame Moors. They stay trying to put us in, in a box like, like, like we just don't exist. I just read to you the foundation of how we look at shit. Time never was when man was not. The thoughts of our law can never be circumscribed. The finite can never comprehend the infinite. That's why they can never tell you where you came from or how long you've been on this planet. Never. Never. You can never get to the time before the Big Bang, nigga. Because guess what? We still in it. You understand what I'm saying, y'all? <laughs> so they say, oh, well, Noble Ju Ali got the no Circle 7 Quran. He plagiarized it from a lifeless levy. Where the lifeless levy give it from? They never ask them that, though, do they? Where the lifeless levy give it from? I bet you don't know. <laughs> I do. He got it from the Anseratics. Who is that?
That's the Anseratic Mysteries. That's the same books that Pastel Beverly Randolph was building on and brought to the people. That's where Levy got it from. Levy ain't write that. Because at the end of Levy's life, he reverted back to Christianity. <laughs> so you mean to tell me the nigga who wrote all of that, he went back to Christianity after he did the Aquarian gospel of Jesus Christ that he plagiarized from somebody else? No, the prophet just took back what already was there. What these fools had claimed as they own. Because Madame Blavatsky and them, she was taught by Moors. It was all Moors that she got her knowledge from. So, yeah. Yeah, these dudes, they, they, they out of touch. They don't really know. You know, they just go about the first thing off the flywheel, and then that's what it is. But like I said, they're a bunch of reavers. They were created to just go into the story and make it look like it was something that it was. You see? So that way they can be cudgels for whatever agenda is being pushed by the goat herders. <clears throat> Any nigga on the internet or whatever that you see with a goat, because they you see them with nothing but goats now. Have you noticed that? Every other picture, these niggas is with a damn goat. You know, but you know what they say, the cover, the cover story is what? Oh, that, that's just me greatest of all time. <laughs> no. Not in the satanic industry, it don't. It don't mean that. And y'all know it don't. Yeah. But, but again, when we talk about the GOAT, we really just talking about Capricorn. They just using the Capricorn um, understanding of it. You know what I'm saying? The reason why, one of the other reasons why, since we talk about comic books and shit like that, right? Um... Y'all already know we've done the classes and I've talked about the, the curse on the Black Panther shit because of um Disney and what they did and all that, right? We don't discuss that, right? Y'all know about that. Right? Oh, one second. Right? Y'all know about the curse of the elders of Kilimanjaro and all of that, right? <clears throat> And how Disney's cursed. This is why everything that's happening to Disney is happening right now. Because them elders is, is stirring their name in the pot over there. <laughs> in Kenya. And these niggas is dropping dead. Hemorrhaging money. Hemorrhaging stocks. It's over for them. So they thought all of that is is was going to work. The woke shit going to work. But everybody turning against that. Because everybody's on to the grift now. You understand? So because we are the giants that represent. Again. The, the the lords of the dead. Like I said, we're the ones that told and 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 we were so impartial that the Hebrews, who were always being cursed by their God for going against they they God's ways and shit, we were the ones that were brought in to choose the leaders for them. So the leaders for the house of Judah, the leaders for the house of, of that was all us. We chose them for them. Because they could not choose amongst themselves without fighting and trying to kill each other. You know what I'm saying? So they created this, this place that exists <clears throat> that they ha really have no power in. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So in that, once Chad, bless the dead, if he's dead at all, came into that understanding and he agreed to do it, what happened was everything went off the rails because the the new trinity after Captain America, Iron Man, and Tony Stark, excuse me, Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor, it was going to be Spider-Man, Black Panther, and Captain Marvel, right? But what happened was Sony at the last minute pulled Tom Holland back to Sony. 
So they couldn't move forward with him in all the other movies. At the same time, Chad died. <laughs> See what I'm saying? He was up out of here. So now they stuck. They don't know what they're going to do. This is all in a book about it that's out now called MCU. The Rise and Fall of the MCU. You can read it. <clears throat> and so Essence, because they didn't want to acknowledge the curse, <clears throat> they also didn't realize that the Black Panther, right? The character, Black Panther, is also the Lord of the Dead, who rules the necropolis. In Necropolis, the Wakanda city of the dead, where the Black Panthers go to die and where you will rule as king of the dead. Every Panther that has ever lived, their strength, their knowledge is now yours. For every battle fought, every battle won, unbeaten, unbroken, a crown of the unconquered, a king of kings, my champion, my Black Panther, the Lord of the dead. History, the necropolis is the Wakandan city of the dead where the previous Black Panthers are buried. T'Challa was recently made the king of the dead by Bast, granting him the strength, knowledge, and experience of every Black Panther that ever lived. It is entered in through the wall of knowledge. Like the wailing wall that the Jews got? But wait, it gets better. After T'Challa reconvened the Illuminati, Right. Which, again, is is allegorically letting you know that the real Illuminati is the original people who is mentally dead, who dwell in the necropolis. Who that who's that? <laughs> who you think that is? Right. In response to the collision of alternate universes, they made the necropolis and their, they made the necropolis their base of operations, building a lab meeting area and a prison to hold the black swans in later it also became home to a cosmic god named terex the truly enlightened who was imprisoned along with the black swan in the home of the illuminati's arsenal so allegorically this is letting you know again that it is we who are the dead because in order for Ask yourself this. If we're dead, then what does that mean? What happens to those who never give up their faith who were dead? What does it say happens to them in the Bible? In their Bible, what does it say? What does it say in the Bible that happens to the to, to the righteous and these people who keep the faith amongst the dead? And if they die, what should happen to them? Come on, y'all. Y'all have been to Sunday school. You know the story. <laughs> what happens? to those who come and never lose their faith. If they should die, what happens to them? That's one thing. Yes, they go to heaven. They get eternal life. What's another way of saying that? What's another way of saying eternal life? What's another way of saying that? Come on, y'all. All the church y'all done been to. Let me give you a hint. Start with an R. Oh, there you go. You got it. Dan. What is it, Dan? Yeah, Dan. Resurrection. The Resurrector. Yes. The resurrection, you become immortal. You become the Lord of the necropolis, which is what? The Lord of the land of the dead. Who are the dead? The dumb, deaf, and blind, right? 
who have no knowledge of themselves, who suffer from what? Mental death and power, right? Right. At some point in your life, you might have ate pork. You don't do that no more, do you? <laughs> right? At some point, you might have ate certain types of meat and all that. You don't do it now, do you? How come? It's not like you don't like meat. How come you don't do it? Yes, because you don't eat because you're not a cannibal. See, you don't eat the dead flesh, do you? No, no. That means what? That means that you're not a zombie, right? And if you're not a zombie, that means that you're what? You're really alive amongst the dead. Because he who... Because the one with sight in the kingdom of the blind is king, correct? Correct? Yes. So, yeah. So, embrace. So, I say, Moses, let's embrace it. Great. More, yeah. Get this book, read this book. Understand it. So when them fools start coming to you and whatever, you can just blow their minds. You can blow their heads up because they think they got you. They think you're gonna be. Oh, see, I got this boy. He gonna be done. I got him. He gonna. He gonna know that that word be dead and that he represented dead people and all that. Yup. Yup. I do. <laughs> yup. My people is dead, and amongst the dead, the Moors are the kings. Because we were the ones that ushered in the millennial kingdom reign. We were the ones that brought humanity back into balance within itself. We were the ones that harvested all of the, the sciences in the world to create the somatic technology to grow the buildings out the fucking ground and get rid of the giants and petrify them and all that shit. We did all of that. We got rid of the idol worshippers. We blew them off the thing. We created the nuclear bombs that turned it to the point that the Egyptians had to wear wigs and shit. We did all that. Yup, we got rid of the Harris chef. You right, you right. And in that, we was cursed by them to be a dead people. So I wear that with pride. Yup, more me do mean dead. Yup, it mean dead, it mean life, it mean light, it mean everything. Who don't want to have more of something? <laughs> Just on a basic level. Who don't want more of something? How many people is at Thanksgiving talking about, can I have some more, please? Exactly. So again, and when more's, and when you have more of something, you have what? A lot, right? Which is the old moon goddess that we turn into a so-called image, a status to create a religion to get these niggas to stop worshiping idols and killing each other and not bathing and shit. <laughs> and we gave it to them. And that became their version of the religion of Islam. And then we split. Then we said, now, nah, go. Y'all got that? We out. And we went up into Europa. We came back to America. We went into the Antilles, which is the Caribbean. And set up shop back up in there and let them niggas do what they need to do. Yep, we did that. That's how we rule. Yep, that's how we ruled the dead. And then after we fell, we fell now into the necropolis. Because now we're in the aftermath of the destruction of the millennial reign kingdoms of the ancient Moorish Empire. So we are now living in the post-apocalyptic world of the future that we created for ourselves. Therefore, now that we are the Moors of the dead, we can only be resurrected to life through love, truth, peace, freedom, justice, and equality. So all the rest of these haters could eat a dick. Excuse my language. Because they don't know what they're talking about. Because they mad that they don't have no nationality. They mad that they don't have no, no people behind them that they can actually stand on. They mad because they scared of the dark side of themselves. Because unlike the rest of the world, we Moors, we didn't obliterate our underworld. We kept in contact with the dead. <laughs> we kept the breast with them niggas. We, we made sure that they was right. 
<laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We kept it going because in the end, once you're dead, that's it. You understand? There is no coming back. So once you're dead, you're gone. So when these people talk about that they be in, they be for the dead and they be they be doing communications and shit with them, they lying. They talking to gins. They talking to disembodied Nephilim giants and shit, posing as aliens or whatever else the hell they don't. You understand? The KKK shit wasn't even created by them. That's Moors. That's Moors created that to 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 as a as a, a contingent to fight against the rest of these niggas that were trying to encroach on the land. So when so when Kanye talking about the black skinhead shit and the black KKK, like that's real, because all of that comes from the ancient order of the Negro order of Seville in ancient Spain, who the Moors after they was the ones that had to stay after the reconquest and the, and the uh, reconditioning, they forced them to stay. So in that, in order for them to perform the rites, they would do it in the robes to cover their faces, to cover their shame. See? It's called the Negro Order of Seville. White man ain't even create the KKK. He couldn't even create that. He didn't even do that. It was here before he got here. <laughs> he inherited this shit like everything else. To scare these dead niggas into doing what people wanted them to do. That's why they're so scared of this dude. They don't have no wins. They, these people don't know what they talk about. These people... They want us to be everything they say we are, and we're none of it. We existed before it, we'll exist after it. Y'all niggas will keep debating on what y'all gonna call yourself. I don't care. I don't care. We done been showing and proving all night. <laughs> all night. Yeah, so there is no end if we still exist. You understand? There is no end. We will always be here. These people don't have no wins. They don't have no direct control over this reality anymore if they ever did. They don't. So stop giving them power. Stop acting like they have the ability to do nothing because they can't do nothing. Like Bobby said, they might run around this motherfucker, but they don't run it. And above the firmament was... That was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above it. Right? This is sky. This is sky stone. It's a natural element. One of the natural elements they don't tell nobody about that exists. That's out there. This is the sapphire stone that's that is made from the specific type of ice that they be using, but they can't harness it. They can only deal with it out there in Antarctica. They can't bring any of it back because by the time they get it, they can't keep it cold enough without it disappearing. Because it disappears after a point. But it's lighter than a feather. You could throw it up in the air and it float back down. See? It's an actual real element, real stone. You think it's a crystal, but it's actually made from the firm itself, the sky, the pieces of that shit. Like I said, it's so far out there, you don't know what it is. But it's liquefied itself into a medium that they could study. This is another version of how it looks. Sometimes pieces of it falls down and the white people tell people that it's, that it's the fuselage stuff that falls out of planes, lying. And it's bendable, like rubber. And it's also kind of hot. If you could keep it cool long enough, but it's dumb cold, like it could also burn you as cold as it is. Get the rest of the pictures and then we'll close out of it.
This is why they don't want us going to Antarctica and all that, because all that shit up there is our shit, just like everywhere else. Because Antarctica itself is not a place. It's a gateway to another place. You understand? They don't want people dealing with that because all the governments on the planet are evil. And they're all trying to kill us now. Because they've convinced humanity that it doesn't deserve to exist. So this is what it looks like in a hard form. On the left and on the right, this is them turning it into a liquid. Excuse me. On the left is the liquid. On the right is the original form. So when you see images of Amun and he's blue like this, you see, that's because this is the region area in which he also had dominion. See? Right? It's another piece. They ain't talking to us about this, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they really want to keep this under wraps because this brings a whole nother element of science into it because these are elements that are outside of the periodic table. They can't even tell you what it is. You understand? See, look. It will it will always vaporize into air and you wouldn't have nothing left when you got back to the US. He said the Russian scientists had discovered the same problem when they tried to take sky ice back to Russia. So that was why they all had research stations at Antarctica. After maybe 15 minutes of handling the piece of sky ice, it was almost completely gone. Just a tiny little bit was left and my glove was dry the whole time. I had never seen anything like it before or since and that's unusual because I've always had interest in scientific things. This is the type of technology our ancestors was dealing with. This is the ether technology. This is part of it. They was using this ice to power their own vehicles and all types of shit. So much so that it would give them the blue within blue. Like in Dune, they talk about the blue within blue eyes when they would take the spice. This is the blue. This is the same blue, like they said, that is supposedly represented of the ether. This is why the ice is reflecting all of the shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, this is what's going on. So like I said, the moon landing, you know the moon landing, so as we close out and just put a bin in it, the moon landing is fake because why would Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin, and Michael Collins have a star on the Walk of Fame? Why would real people be surrounded by actors? I'll tell you why. Because Edward R. Murrow, through him, they were able to take control of the radio industry. Through James Stewart, in his image, they were able to basically to, again, forward the so-called uh, uh, white agenda, so-called post-Cold War agenda, because he represented the future. That's why he did movies. Uh, the movies that he did was in such a array. And then girdled by him, you got Kirk Douglas. Right. And, you know, Kirk Douglas was in all the ancient shit. All the old movies that's dealing with, like, the ancient times of the Moors and all of that. So they all were there to create history. Islam, <laughs> a history that did not exist and still don't. Anybody have any questions before we close out? See?
It's another depiction of the sky ice. So start drinking chlorophyll in your water because these heavy chemicals and, and active radiants that they put in our stuff, they can't exist in a heavy, heavy fluorated environment. You understand? They just can't do that. So the more green juices, the more, more chlorophyll, that type of shit, fish oil, you know what I'm saying? Like, like heavy floral things, it, it can't exist. Yeah, please do, man. Hit me up at houseofellahotmail.com. I'd love to hear it. Um, with your dead relatives, you deal with them the same way you deal with dead presidents. You know what I'm saying? You save the ones you can, spend the ones that you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and don't spend with the ones you can't. You can't control how these how how zombies think. You just gotta know what they are. They're zombies for a reason because they don't want to see beyond themselves. And they may or may not be affected with the real worm that I showed you that can be passed on through drinks, through sex, uh, through the actual ritual where they put it in your eye. You understand? Like, it's all popping. But like I said, in, in being Lords of the Dead, we we don't have to do what these people who are not connected to the dead do. The people who aren't connected to the dead, these are the niggas that's doing rituals, cutting chickens up, you understand? Um, doing all the downstairs shit that Yeshua allegedly came and died so they didn't have to do. You understand? These are the people that are still caught up in Freemasonic tendencies and practices. You understand? They're the ones that are still caught up with the death cult. See, the death cult is based around us because we're the Hiram. We're the ancient Canaanite king that they killed to set up their world. You understand? We're Hiram. So, with, so every Freemason, when he joins and he commits himself to the order, he is acting as us. And the order is killing him, thus making him dead making him a zombie. So he goes in alive and he comes out dead. Therefore, he becomes our slave. That's why we call them Muslim sons. Because once they go through that ritual, they naturally become subjects to us because we are the object that they aspire to. Islam, that's why you see the spade above this nigga's head. See the spade? See it? You see it? Pointing right down. Thank you. Anybody else? That's why you don't got to join into that shit. That's why you don't got to be a part of any of these things to make dead oaths against yourself. You ain't got to do none of that no more because you've been resurrected. Therefore, we become lords of the necromolis, of the necropolis. That's all America, that's all the United States is, is a necropolis. That's all the world is. Again, we are in the, we are in the, 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 uh, the post-apocalyptic world of our ancient self. You dig? This is the new, the, the post-nuclear war zone. And we set it up. We did it. White man ain't do none of this. He ain't do none of this shit. It was here when he got here. He just walked into the buildings and started saying what it was. And then because we had now been under the whole mass amnesia of what happened, we just basically went along with it. People over here were so pure. We wasn't, they wasn't fired. They wasn't doing none of that. But once we started integrating back with them and shit, that's when everything started falling. So between 1492 and 1791, that's really the last bastion of us really, really fighting back. See what I'm saying? 
So what did the Moors do? According to Uriel, they created the plan to be able to integrate into these Republican governments that they essentially set up to eventually be able to act as trust to get their shit back once we woke up, once we resurrected out of the dead zone and took control and turned the Acropolis back into what it is. We've been in the post apocalyptic world since 1492. We the ones that petrified all of these niggas. We the ones got rid of the Nephilims and all of that. I'm getting up. Anybody else? Okay, so again, man, thank you guys for coming through. Definitely check out uh, www.cordobaorganics.com. Um, definitely look out for the, uh, the app. Let me put it up real quick. Look out for that. We're going to hopefully go live this week. So it'll have a subscription tier for everybody to come into at whatever one that they're uh, comfortable with. Oh, real quick. Let me just show this real quick. Yo. My bad. Indeed. Uh, does anybody else have anything? Well, I'll pull this up real quick. Yeah, because that's what they are. They're old melted castles and people that we've been living in all of these years. So yeah, uh, ultimately that's what it boils down to. This is us on the different astrals from the Doth, which is the highest, Sephiroth, which is basically right under the Kether, right? And then this is the 200 angels that fell. Combined creates eternity. Right? And you notice it's the same sky blue, right? As the sapphire. Oh, my bad. Anybody else? Wait, hold up. Let me get the sapphire real quick. Exactly. So yeah, so you guys can send that. Uh, yeah, see the sapphires the same color. See the dots. See how it's the same eternity as this. All of this stuff, all of this mythology is based on an aspect of the original cultures and history that we have within us that all these niggas wish they did. So, God, again, if you guys can send that uh, capital money sign, capital DS418 to Cash App, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, again, every little bit helps getting this thing done. Uh, just want to show you guys again real quick what the app looks like uh yeah real quick my bad sorry i'm taking a while oh yeah here it is so yeah if you can check this out definitely download it let everybody know just go a dot big up to uh brother david he's been working on it for a long time i definitely want to give Thanks and praise to him and his family. Help him get it done. And um, yeah, man, definitely check this out because I'm going to start to route all of my stuff directly through this because I got to get out of these dead end relationships with these platforms. That's not that's shadow banning me and doing all this other stuff. Yes, they do, because we was blue. We still being born blue. They call them Mongolian spots, though, or, or Godsmack. But yeah, 
that's that's where we are. No, no good. Thank you. All right. So yeah, guys, if you guys can definitely send that. If you want to do any consultations or whatever, hit me up, houseofl at hotmail dot com, and uh, we could take it from there. You know, but uh, definitely look out for the app. Definitely, uh, please make sure you subscribe still on YouTube because they be taking my notifications off of everybody's stuff. So I'm gonna still post things on there periodically, but it's definitely gonna be a conduit for the app. So you guys can be able to hit me up. I really appreciate it. Uh, see more, you right on point. All right. So again, notice the agent is notice the principal. Thank you guys for coming through. And uh, if we have any more questions, again, let me know. Definitely get that book and go through it. So when these idiots start coming to you about how you dad and and you this, you can actually thoroughly give them what they looking for. <laughs> you understand? Because in the end, they really don't understand the nature and the power that we have, you know what I'm saying, at our disposal. And um, they want us to doubt our nationality, the profit, or anything that brings us some sort of comfort or solace, you know what I'm saying? So you want to be able to disassociate that aspect from the truer aspect of what and who we are as a people and embrace the foolishness that the enemy tries to bring on the battlefield, especially if it reinvigorates your position in the war. You know what I'm saying? So if they want to say that that's what it is and they spooked out by that. That's even better for us most because again, we are the lords of the dead. We are the keepers of the necropolis. You know what I'm saying? We are the the new moors that's come to put the old moors in the back. You dig? Indeed. And azul, blue, royal blue, that sapphire, that's also the color of the pineal orchid. So think about that. So yeah, get this book. And start to shut these niggas down that's talking all of this crap about that. Embrace the fact of who we are, lords and lordesses, the eels and the bays. Remember that, man. Only all of the highest angels was named L. Right? There was only one that wasn't. And that was Lucifer. <laughs> so that lets you know the company that we keep in. So again, long live the empire, and uh, let's get it, man. You know what I'm saying? Islam. Peace.